Welcome to the fifth episode of our video series on cattle farmer training, brought to you by the Karen Beef Academy. This video series will not only give you a good understanding of cattle farming and what needs to be taken into consideration, but will also assist you in becoming more profitable and sustainable as a cattle farmer. We will cover a wide range of topics throughout this series, aimed to inform you on best practice and enlighten you on some new techniques. We will also shed some light on challenges facing cattle farmers and how to overcome them. This episode highlights the best practices or protocols you should be following when introducing new cattle to your herd and refers to the steps that need to be taken to prevent diseases from occurring on your farm or spreading within or between the herds in your community. Some of these preventative measures include medications, vaccinations, dipping and quarantine facilities. On larger commercial farms, these measures are commonly referred to as biosecurity. Some diseases will have a direct influence on the production performance of the herd and many cannot be controlled by vaccination only. For these diseases, good management during the various stages of the production cycle will be especially important for the control or prevention of, for example, foot and mouth disease. Implementing sound protocols is not expensive or difficult but will depend on the knowledge of the conditions and reasons why and when these diseases or outbreaks occur. Each disease will be unique in its mode of transmission and development. Thus, it is important that each farmer and community, along with the state vet, should know which diseases are identified as potentially dangerous to the herd. Managing animals comprises two sections that cover the isolation of new animals and the testing for various diseases among all new animals that have either been purchased or have not been in contact with the herd over a long period of time. This also means that these animals should not share water or feed sources. A complete history of the new animals is necessary and therefore New animals should not be bought from an unknown source. Some diseases are transmitted by semen, embryos, fresh meat, milk, or byproducts such as raw hides and wool. All new animals should be isolated for 21 to 28 days before being integrated into the herd. Most diseases have an incubation period of one to four weeks, so these animals must be tested, vaccinated, dipped, and dewormed. They should also be given time to adapt to their new environment. Due to the stress caused by being moved, their immune system will be suppressed and healthy animals can suddenly become sick. The training of people regarding the process of keeping infectious diseases out of the farm, known as bio-exclusion, should be a priority to keep the herd safe. Everyone should be aware of the measures required to prevent the spread of disease and should be trained to manage animals in such a way that stops the transfer of disease. The biggest problem is not adhering to the necessary steps required to protect your animals and the community when moving them to new areas or introducing new animals to your herd. Do not allow feed and animal products of unknown origin onto the farm as they may be infected or contaminated. Ideally, managing programs should be put in place. Have a veterinarian draw up a complete herd health program to follow. This will allow the herd to be protected from any new diseases be introduced and also provide preventative protection against any possible disease outbreaks. The protocols the farmer follows should be an ongoing management plan and not just a once-off implementation. 
This involves continuous evaluation, identification of problem areas, planning, training, monitoring, and implementation. Quarantine facilities are the first measure to take into account so as to prevent unnecessary exposure to disease that could be brought in by new animals. All incoming animals should be isolated and kept separate in a camp or crawl. They must then be tested before being allowed to mix with the rest of the herd. To help keep your herd clean and prevent the animals from bringing in any diseases, it is a priority to graze cattle in clean areas, away from township boundaries where internal and external parasites and diseases pose a high risk to the herd. Having a good relationship with your community and neighbors is important and will enable you to set up measures together as your cattle are more likely to come into contact with each other, especially where open land is shared for grazing. This will also allow everyone in the community to be more vigilant on animal health and keeping infectious diseases out of the area. Deep tanks are central points within different municipal areas where cattle owners have regular meetings and annual elections. The state vet will visit these deep tanks to vaccinate, screen, and deworm the community's cattle. Deep tanks are also used as a venue to host farmers training in basic animal health and livestock management principles, which includes vaccination and biosecurity measures. An Izinduna represents the spokesperson or mediator and often acts as a bridge between the people and the committee of the deep tanks. Cattle owners who have questions or challenges can approach the Izinduna who will speak to the committee or state vet. Thank you for watching. We do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please follow our social media channels for more and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to access the other videos in this series. Until next time, goodbye.